Welcome to Let's Talk Geek, episode 54. In the show, we talk about Hulk Smash, local loop unbundling, and the naked news. Thanks for listening. Welcome to Let's Talk Geek, episode 54. Uh, our random for this week is 6 by 9, uh, which equals 54. The incorrect answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything. This is from Wikipedia. Nice. So why that comes from or why, I don't know. Um, our guest this week is Samantha Perry from Brainstorm Magazine. So I'm just making sure I have it correct this time. Um, and just to read a quick bio that she sent us. She's been co- covering tech since the late 90s and probably deserves a medal by now, or at least a large sympathy v- card. Have you received your card from somebody yet? No. <laughs> no no we'll Valium prescription either. Yeah, we'll, we'll make a plan for your sympathy card. Thanks, guys. <laughs> um, you, sorry to seek a medal. Have you <laughs> go look on The Onion? Because The Onion wants a Pulitzer Prize. Oh, Watch yes. that video. <laughs> all of them, not just one. <laughs> no, all of them. But yeah, they, Onion wants a Pulitzer Prize. So watch the video. Um, anyway, got sorry a to interrupt. very good uh, actors and stuff going through it. I know Neil Gaiman's gone through it. The guy who wrote uh, one of the episodes for the new Sherlock Holmes, the BBC one, he's gone for this whole. They're brilliant. You should watch them. Uh, to find Samantha Perry, you can <laughs> find her at Samantha Perry. Uh, any other websites you want to mm, push? Worldwideweb.brainstormmag.co.za. Cool. Read it. It is good. It's oh, on screen you. now. Do you just quickly want to tell us about it? Not particularly. It's a website. <laughs> you go visit it. <laughs> um, yeah. So the way the website is. Uh, Updated once a month at the moment with the print content. It's going to be updated more regularly from the 1st of July. So look out for changes in our digital strategy. And that's about all we need to say about that. And you have a magazine. And we have a magazine. It's yes. Just digital. Which is very pretty and glossy. And uh, yeah, it's a business monthly magazine. We've been publishing for 10 years this year. August will be our 10th year anniversary edition, cool. which is also something worth looking out for because we're going to have a 10 years of ICT supplement attached to that. And I see Johan else is being incredibly humble by searching for himself on your website. There's this <laughs> article. <laughs> 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 I'm trying to find it. Hold on. <laughs> right, okay. well, well, while Johan's going, it's there somewhere. Hold on. Uh, we're it's just going to go into our calendar. <laughs> uh, okay, first of July, which is Friday. Yes. yes. Rika Day. Oh. Dun dun. Well, dun. yes, day we get cut na, off. Na. Or like someone we know, some people are getting <laughs> cut off for a day now. Uh, to, to remind them to, to Rika. Seriously, people yes. are doing that. Oh, my God. Uh, we, we know if somebody from personal experience, your office basically got cut off for a day. Oh, well, wow. I was going to, yeah, to get two I office got accounts. I got without off. doing anything. It's so. fairly easy, but this it's a bit of a farce. Got to admit it. It is definitely you, you a bit of a farce, and the spam I could live without. And it's, and it's interesting. I've been fielding questions all day um, from guys who are worried about their devices like TomToms and Kindles, which come with embedded SIM cards. And, how do you and they're worried, them? I don't know the phone number to this thing, I can't crack it open, I don't know what the SIM number is, uh, and you need to show them the physical SIM with your ID book and your proof of address before they can recreate it. That's the law. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? So I got, uh, like, we know how it works. It's a worldwide SIM, right? It's a global SIM. Yeah. It's a foreign SIM, so it doesn't need to be recreated in South Africa. Um, so so um, I just got official comment from Vodacom to that effect. I'll do the article tomorrow. Um, but, uh, I mean, there's your loophole right there. You can get global SIM cards. You don't, don't need to recall them. You can have them delivered to your door. Yeah. But also, like, the proof of residence. Do you know how easy it is to fake those documents? You know, there's the also know there's guys who are going out, apparently reeking, like, 100 SIMs, and then going out and selling them. Yes. So but well, they're the filling other a thing, gap. Sorry, the other thing I believe they've been having endless amounts of hassles with is a lot of the townships have decidedly informal approaches to roads and street mm. numbers. So... What the operators were saying to people was just get the pastor of your church or something to, to write Some an official letter, native, particularly yeah. in the rural areas, saying exactly where you live. And it's like, okay, so how easy is that to go, here, dude, have a couple of hundred rand, write me a whole lot of letters. Yes? So you're a pastor. No. Well, um, wh- so why, why get that guy to write it? Just write it yourself. Yeah, well, precisely. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a bit of a farce. But anyway. It's a bit of a farce. Other thing that's happening on the 1st of July is the Google Developer Challenge. Uh, get your submissions in. I <laughs> know oh, I won't. Thursday. Yeah, yeah neither will I. I have a friend who's actually on track. Tell him that he's a legend. Well, 
If he's listening, so you're a legend. He, he says he hasn't slept for the past two days. And it's almost there. He just needs to get the one bit of his game engine sorted. <laughs> nice going, Johan. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I just found the article. He actually Ash found himself on the Brainstorm website. Samantha That's wrote an article going. about me, uh, 31st of January 2008. So there we go. If you have a look. I'm amazed you remember because I don't remember. Hey, I don't get it a lot. It happened so there last you go. week, <laughs> I don't remember. So that's not necessarily saying much. Well done. Good searching. There we indeed. go. Huh? Yeah, there that's, some, go. that's some search food. There that is go. some search for you because uh, that, that website's Samantha got a lot of content. I just wait. You had a very nice photo of me on there. Where'd, what happened to the photo? It's it'll, in be the in my, it'll be in my archives. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, we do. We archive everything. We're a content company. We have lots of archives. Cool. Thank you. Uh, also happening in July, we have Icon uh, starting on the 16th to the 17th, which is the gaming uh, Johannesburg convention. Very cool if you've never been. It's Best you get out. there. Mm. Yeah. We are going to try to, well, we will be doing some recording on the Saturday. Cool. So any of you guys want to join us, you're welcome to. What's the date? Uh, the Saturday will be the... I will have just gone to print. I won't be sick for human consumption, 16. I'm afraid. Oh, so that should actually <laughs> be the 15th to the 17th. Um, so it's on the Friday. If uh, I can, just for those guys that don't know, there's actually a, a hall that's going to be there doing a lot of stalls. So there's a lot of tables mm. and you can buy your... Comics. Comics. Uh, yeah, if you into what's the dresser anime, anime the role playing, you can my uh, all the board games type of things. This guy's going to be selling board games, and Henry Quinn did confirm for that we had on um, Let's Talk Afrikaans a couple of weeks ago. He's actually going to have a table there as well with the Lego, so he'll be there, and then they will have running in the in the side halls. So they will actually be running quite a bit of. Um, Quite a bit of uh, role-playing co competitions and stuff. I know well. the Mead people we spoke to are running a game there. Oh, are they? Oh, cool. Yeah. I know some of them. I okay. They keep on trying to drag me into a game, but I'm doing a master's degree, so I haven't had a weekend in two and a half years. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have one again one day, well, right? We're going to talk a bit more about <laughs> your master's just now. And in a second. And yeah. what, what you're feeling on it. Um, but so, yeah, yeah please go there. check. Yeah. Cool. Uh, and then I also just want to mention, okay, it's a bit far away, 21st to 23rd of September, mm. uh, iWeek. Mm. Which is a free conference for it's basically ISPA and WISPA, which is the internet service providers and the wireless internet service providers. We had Dave McClure and on last year. On last year, and I've gone blank unfortunately on the Australian Peter Corellis. Peter Corellis. Well done. Corellis, uh, Good on going. last year, who were great, and they they said they can get us somebody again this year. So we just need to decide who, uh, but definitely with our it's just down the road in Alder and Centurion. If you can get to it, and it's free, and it's we saw some just of the register. Yeah. Oh, is it Centurion this year? Yeah, yeah. Okay. which suits me just fine. Yeah, I'm <laughs> but sure. every other journalist in the country has to drive through. <laughs> I work in the same office park <laughs> as the venue. So. Is that what you were trying to tell me on 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 WhatsApp? That you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I would be there. So I'm going to convince work that I need to be there for work. So good man. Cool. And we've briefly our first topic, which was Rika. Uh, we've briefly gone over it. It's a mm -hmm. fast. Who knows what Rika stands for? Oh, my giddy aunt. <laughs> <laughs> Regulation <laughs> of interception <laughs> of communications. Can you say there we go. There's the, you're say missing that three times. Quick. Hang on a second. <laughs> second. Hang on I'm a missing second. the second half of the name, though, because yeah. it's actually awfully long. It's the regulation of interception and the... And the something... And the something of personal communications. It really is long and ugly. I, I'm going to go look for it. You guys The regulation continue. of interception com of communications and provision of communications related information act. Sure. There we go. Say that okay. three times. Quick. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, but having said this, if you don't know whether you're re uh, recruited or not, I've checked today just to make doubly sure. My broadman has a whole bunch of very nice, uh, all the SMSs you can send through or where you can phone just to confirm that you are recruited. Mm. And the, the networks are running massive promotions. Obviously, they stand to lose a lot of money if people don't yeah. recur their stuff. So they are on Twitter. They are sending out press releases daily. In fact, we got a press release yesterday from Vodacom. We got a press release today from Vodacom. Um, to, to, to push this thing. So just conspiracy the theory. Is all How many there. subscribers are they going to suddenly lose? Because all those subscriber numbers they've been releasing for the last, how long, 10 years? Well, I, I know you're... Inaccurate. My broadband well, it depends how you measure them. The problem is SIM numbers versus actual human numbers. Exactly. Because if you look at all the SIM cards in a tracker, the tracker, for example, yeah. is responsible for at least a quarter of the SIM cards in the country. Mm -hmm. And then there's the fact that people tend to have multiple SIM cards so they can take advantage of arbitrage opportunities in pricing. Yeah, so I, I mean, you might, I mean, there might be a lot of folks who are just going, I'm not going to recur this prepaid. Someone's just get another one. Yeah. And so, yeah. Cool. 
Right, so that's all we have to say about that. <laughs> now, <laughs> there, 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 ah, there, was, there was one other conspiracy theory which I thought was interesting, and that's that some people were reporting that they were suddenly recurred. I was recurred. I was suddenly recurred. I have not gotten off my fat ass and gone anywhere near an MTN store to recur myself. But I have renewed my contract in the last couple of years, and with the FICA regulations coming in, they have my identity book and they have proof of my address anyway so legally speaking they can reek me without my intervention which is what they've done yeah they well, reeked me for my Vodacom 3G the same way because I took the contract out two years ago and they needed the my proof of residence and all the rest Fika of it. So anyway. yeah. it was Fika and it was reeked because I checked myself. the other day just randomly when they when everybody started with a Rika now the deadline's coming up and I went on the MTN website and checked and my Card is recurred, and I thought, okay, well, maybe because I'm a journo and the operators try to be nice to us every now and again. And then I checked my other half, so he's also an MTM subscriber, and his had been recurred too. And same thing, we're both contract customers, but they have proof of address. Yeah, they have all the information. They, they have they everything need. they need, so they don't actually need us to go in, which is what was delaying me from doing it because I'm like, you have all my details. You probably get about 30,000 copies of my ID book by now for every single time I've renewed a mm, contract exactly. over the 12 years I've been a customer of yours. Why must I go Do and it. give you another copy? So, yeah, thank you, MTN. <laughs> We're not going through the list of how you do it, eh? No, no, no. no, no, no we really thought about <laughs> it. We that star just, 124 just hash on some networks and yeah. star 131 Rika hash. There's a way easier way. Just wait. And then it'll <laughs> be switched <laughs> off and then you know you're not. You go in and sort it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Have you ever Actually, had your no, phone it's not, not working for a day? Dude, I it's wish it would. It's a nightmare. I wish it would. <laughs> just like there would be no... I have withdrawn. Quiet. Quiet. Calls just from quiet. people trying to... Yeah, there would be all those things I want to do with it that I can't do. Come yeah, on, that's a small price. The to calls pay. I don't small miss. Small price to but pay. But it's all the data connectivity that yes. I miss. Because I can live without the calls. I have my phone on silence and I refuse to answer it a lot of the time anyway. Because I have it for my convenience, that not everybody else's. But mm. the data stuff, I'd that's one thing miss. I don't have a problem with. Because I mean, really, okay, at, at the office we got Wi-Fi everywhere, so no problem there. At home I've got Wi-Fi everywhere. Yeah, but you're a geek, right? The rest yeah. of us don't. <laughs> Okay, fine. <laughs> All right. Not to put too fine a point on the matter. <laughs> I'm moving house. Can somebody come set up my Wi-Fi? Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you can ask mom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Aces Project Hulk, which came out last week, but we're talking about it now. Hulk Incredible. Smash. Yes. Hulk Smash. Yeah. Um, Hulk Smash. So it's actually data. quite. But before we get into that, I think it's quite cute that Ata, uh, their, their secret. All, all companies do that. They've got secret project names mm. for their mm. projects for when they're talking about it in public and they don't want people to know what it's about, right? So apparently there was a Project Batman, but they don't want to say what that project was. Um, this. Um, promotion of theirs, the 10 gig for 199 Rand a month. Uh, so they, they are the details, by the way. Um, uh, for iWeek. Uh, you know, that's iWeek. <laughs> <laughs> I'm typing. <laughs> We've, moved. <laughs> We've moved on now. Yeah. But, but anyway, so, so that was called Project Hulk, and apparently yeah. they're working on a Project Robin. I think that's cute. That's cool. adorable. No, they, they, even, they even wanted to work in some, apparently they've got a, a business product that they called, they wanted to call Project Enterprise. And then have Project Kirk, Project Spa. Oh, that could no. be pretty cool. Oh, oh, geeks going on but, but apparently the enterprise division didn't think it was funny. <laughs> well, they are a telecom division. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to know who's working there. There's a bunch of dry. It's, it's, it's <laughs> quite amazing what they've actually offered, though. It's just 10 gigs, which is about four, five times the amount anybody else is offering. Yeah, It only applies or if you're actually on the actual ATA network, though, which only cover, covers. Hello. No more water for me. Covers something like 18% of the country. Look, mm. it is major metropolitan areas, which is fine, but um, the topology of Johannesburg, for example, means your coverage is probably a bit erratic. Yeah. Uh, one thing we do want to know about that, what happens if you're on a cell that isn't an A to cell? Does it like cut off at that point, yes. or do you just only get charged? Um, you mean on Project Hulk now? Yeah. No, no, no. The, the promotion, the way I understand it, it will only work on ATA coverage. So um, they've, they've actually been guys complaining um, that... Uh, the, the site says that they've got coverage, and then it turns out they don't. Uh, these are typical teething problems, yeah. which is what this promotion is for. So as long as ATA handles those properly, it won't be an issue. You know, refund those people or whatever the case might be. But um, uh, Zoltan Miklos, he's their, he's their mm -hmm. technical mm -hmm. dude. Um, he told me in as many words, listen, tell people this only runs on our network because we can't afford the roaming charges. Um, there's no way we'd be able to do 10 gigs on roaming on MT. Yes, no, I can imagine that. Jan, just a question. Um, somebody tweeted that nobody's got SIM cards, so it's all good and fine that people are... Don't they? That's the ATA stores should have by now. Then they've done very well, if they honestly have no SIM cards. Okay. That's I actually want to go and get this. Yeah. Go, go check around. Um, I know everybody's like, oh, there are no SIM cards, but then it's like one store that's out of stock and it'll have tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. One thing to be weird is a two-year contract. Yes. Which I just a lot of people are raging against. 
is how that's going to fit in with the Consumer Protection Act, which says you have to offer a 12-month version. No, does it say that? I didn't yes, yes like it does. That. Oh, that's yeah. interesting. I think it says, yeah, you know, the problem it's is consumer though. law when it comes to that sort of thing. At the end of the day, you're still working on a willing buyer, willing seller relationship. So ATA can, can reasonably argue this particular special is a 24-month contract because it's the only way we can recoup our costs. And with our other contracts, we offer you three months and 12 months or whatever. So there's probably a lot of gray area there that we're going to see a couple of court cases over in the next year or so, mm. given how slowly the law moves. But yeah, the Consumer Protection Act says you have to offer 12-month contracts. The idea behind that is to stop cellular operators from locking customers in. Yeah. So with a data bundle like this, where they're not trying to lock people in, they just genuinely need to recoup their costs, uh, yeah, they could probably uh, reasonably argue if you don't like the terms, take one of our other bundles. So, But now I want to I want to point, I want to sort of question to that question is where's Vodacom's 12-month 12, 12 bundles? No, well, that's the thing. Everybody, they should all have. The, the Consumer Protection Act um, also specifies that everybody has to have plain English contracts. Yes. Go to any service provider you like and ask them for a plain no. English contract, please. Yeah. Just, you know, for did, my amusement. Did, did you tweet me? Sorry, we don't even have Gerrit mic'd up tonight. He's busy helping behind yes. the decks. Um, but somebody tweeted me a, uh, a, a link to ACDC's uh, terms and conditions. I don't know if you guys remember ACDC. Not ACDC the band. <laughs> I was the, the Windows <laughs> application for editing images. Oh, I loved no. ACDC. Yes. Wait, yes. ACDC, free app for editing images. Yeah. Very, very neat. Very cool. Uh, I remember it was, was James at the office. Um, and he, he's forwarded me this link, and they've got like legalese and a plain English version on the right. And, it, and it's gorgeous. I mean, th that's the template for how to do it. Yeah, legally, that's what they're required to do here. So anybody who deals with, with consumers in any respect in terms of the Consumer Protection Act needs to have plain English contracts. And your liability extends backward up the chain from the consumer to the supplier to the manufacturer. And things are going to get very metaphysical in contract law. Look, I think these things are just going to take a while to go through. But it, my main thing is is the 24-month contract is pretty much a lock-in. Yeah, now, I don't mind sacrificing some, you know, half that, get a five five gig one, but then give me a 12-month 12, 12 contract. Quick. Sure. I think that's that's the whole intention behind it is to give consumers that choice where they can say, I only want to be locked in for 12 months and I'm comfortable with that kind of arrangement. The other thing is that you also, I think within the first three months of any contract, you can back out of it yeah. for a reasonable fee. What constitutes a reasonable mm, fee exactly. remains to be seen. There's no legal precedent for that one yet, but... So coming back to this whole consumer act, uh, what happens if you what happens if you sell something like on eBay? Do you get covered? What what do you have to do? Do you have to now offer the guy a three month guarantee on your thing? That eBay should have terms and conditions that specify the seller's liability and the buyer's liability in but terms of three month terms and conditions. And eBay technically isn't covered by South African law. No, well it doesn't no, okay, fall let's under not say eBay. Let's say one of the the Kalori. Kalori, Kalori, whatever. Second hand. They'll need to. They'll need to. to just what, change has that. anyone had a look at that? I don't know. No, it's a good okay. question. I, I yeah. think they, they do will need to change have a bid. Um, so if you've got yeah. an auction, which is what that falls under, it actually falls under slightly different requirements. Because it's yeah. an auction now. Somebody buys a car and they come back three months later and go, no, sorry, I, I don't want this. And, but they were bidding against other people. Um, yeah. So there is yeah. specific is slightly requirements okay. put in for... But what about, what about putting an ad in the junk mail? For your, you want to sell your car, put an ad in junk mail. So now I've got to give them a three That's where footstuts has always come in. It's a case of you buy what you get. Which we are not. It's specifically footstuts goes, I'm not guaranteeing anything. You take it as it is, and if, it's, if it breaks in two days, that's your problem, not mine. That's exactly what that's Okay, so that is, there's some... That's, that's already in there. So there is something the in there that... For no. Okay. Right. Um, the, the thing is, I believe the CPA has done away with footstuts. You're not allowed to sell un under footstuts clauses anymore. No. So oh, when you sell a car, for instance, this is something also that we thought just about. just be careful. I th I th I None of us are lawyers here? Yes, exactly. Yeah. We don't know. Don't consider I am not a lawyer. <laughs> so so I-N-A-L. Uh, to my knowledge, um, it's it's more our business, like, let's say, second half... Uh, Car sales are not allowed to sell. Sell food yeah. Foodstuts. That, that's for certain. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's also, it's more the protection, it's more long. If you sell a car and you know something's broken, um, then there's legal recourse. Yeah. But, but how to prove that somebody okay. knows yeah. something? I've just recently bought a second-hand vehicle. Oh. The documents has gone from two pages to 300 pages that I've got to sign. I can and leave exactly that. Exactly what you're saying is there. You've got to actually, and my car, trade it in. I like sign 300 times to guarantee this is what's wrong with it. The scratch on the door, yes, it is there, and that sort of stuff. So, 
But let's not get stuck on this. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, okay. no, cool. no, absolutely. So CPA is complicated. I did want to throw in, because we've already got issues with our laws versus the rest of the world's laws in this country when it comes to our film and publications board and not being able to get certain games on certain platforms, which is just an excuse, by the way. But yeah. um, regardless, we already have incompatibilities in terms of our Copyright Act. Uh, in terms, uh, So having another piece of legislation going, oh, now eBay can't operate in South Africa, that's just really... Uh, that's just making us go backwards, not forwards. Yeah, and just a comment um, you on uh, Vodacom. I see some of their contracts are actually available as 12 months, but from Incredible Connection. Just have a look. There's actually yeah. some Vodacom contracts. It's worth somebody actually doing a decent investigative piece ongoing. Okay, well, the CPA has come in now. Who's what changed? does it mean? Who's bitten? Who's, who hasn't? Yeah, I've yeah. I sat through a couple of workshops with some of the some of the legal fraternity trying to give us journos a heads up on how it all is going to work. And it's going to be long, it's going to be complicated, and it's going to be messy. <laughs> anyway, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. yeah. All right. In, in from one uh, long complicated, complicated thing messy. to the next complicated <laughs> one. Um, last week, we started talking a bit on about local loop unbundling. Yes. Uh, now, it turns out Sam has been studying this. So yes, for my sins, which have been numerous. <laughs> and, and I know <laughs> all of us have spoken about it, but I don't think we know anything. So what are your feelings on it? My feelings on LLU. All right. So to perhaps give a bit of background as mm. to what I'm studying, I'm doing a master's in management, ICT, policy and regulation at Wits University. And um, it's a three-year master's degree focusing on you know, ICT, which includes a whole lot of T, as in telecoms, and not a lot of IT, because IT is not particularly regulated. So local loop unbundling is what I've decided to do my research report on because it's such a pertinent question for, for South, South Africa, Africa and yeah. for other developing markets because we all tend to be slightly behind the rest of the world in terms of liberalizing our, our markets for obvious reasons. And um, so local loop unbundling has always been a rallying cry around the whole liberalization thing because the idea is when a second operator comes into a market that's been dominated by somebody like Telcom, you force Telcom to unbundle the local loop so when the new operator comes in, they can start offering services immediately without incurring the cost of rolling out their own network. So, when should we have unbundled the local loop? Neotel. When right we licensed Neotel. <laughs> it is now so far too late to unbundle the local loop. It's most of the telecoms operators I spoke to and um, Brainstorm's July cover story is, uh, is exactly on this issue. Have said, you know, it's too little, too late. There's also the sheer numbers involved. Telcom has four million copper lines. We have 49 million people in the country. And yes, you know, uh, Angus Hay from Neotel goes, well, you know, you're looking at those copper lines are not necessarily going one person per line. They're going into businesses and stuff, which is fair enough. But Neotel's getting into those businesses anyway. Telcom is arguing that there's a last mile in terms of wireless. And they actually have a valid point for once. You can't fault them on that. There is a wireless. No, we've true, but technically, you can't get the same speeds. Yes, and like I was going to say, latency latency technically, they're not, and all the they're rest not equivalent it. yet. Mm. But let's be honest, by the time ICASA, Telcom, and everybody else's lawyers finish fighting about it, they will be. They and, and if you look at HSPA Plus they'll, they'll now... They'll never be. be. They'll never be. So yeah. we deal a lot with this. So we have degrading now. copper, which is getting worse and worse, and which Telcom fiber. isn't yes. maintaining. Well, that's my point, is that there's no point going after the copper network. Mm. Going after fiber, forcing people to roll out fiber, which I don't think is going to happen at 3,000 rand per meter. Um, it's a very expensive thing to force people to roll out. So, yeah. The short of having it subsidized by government, right? Short of having it subsidized by government. And if you look at somewhere like South Korea, that's exactly what happened. The government subsidized and they have 10 gigs to the Australia. home going up ap apartment buildings. Yeah, Australia, I haven't There's a there. US operator, um, which Ars Technica did a piece on, um, who uh, we've mentioned this when we discussed local loop and bundling in the past, um, because it always ends up, mm. we talk about fiber. Um, there's a, there's a U.S. operator which is running out fiber to certain very, very specific cities in California yeah. for $70 a month. Uh. They're giving you a gigabit per second fiber line. Yeah. So I, I, I wonder how they're making their money. Because they're going to, you know, the thing is, right, so well, look, to, set, to set the macroeconomic yeah. stage, you're looking now at a government which has a socio and political agenda when it comes to local mm -hmm. fund bundling, as in delivering services to the people. You're dealing with operators, including the ones who want LLU, who have an e economic imperative to make money out of it. So even if you unbundle the local loop, the guys are going to cherry pick the metropolitan areas where there's large numbers of consumers and where they can offer that kind of service because they know they're going to make a truckload of money off it. Yeah. Because they're yeah. going to get enough consumers. They're still not going to roll out to the rural areas. No. There's no economic incentive for them to do so and unless the Department of Communications comes up with an economic incentive for them to roll out to underserviced areas, it's never going to happen no matter what you unbundle. So there's that complication involved as well. And then the... 
My mind has gone completely blank. Um, I think you've a very important point I was going to make. Oh. No, the point, yes, the point I was going to make. So local even bundling, right? So we have a telecom exchange. So I'm IS and you're Vox and you're A and third operator. So you all want 50 lines out of that exchange. Mm, mm. Who gets what line? On what basis? First come, first serve. If we all want the same 50 lines, how do you work out mm. colo? How do you work out security? Would it work Who has rights like to access to the facility? Would it be by a consumer. It's I mean, usually if the consumer. Well, the thing is, the telecom in this case would have to provision the ability to yeah. unbundle lines in that exchange. So usually, what happens in an LLU arrangement is that the regulator will ask the new entrants to tell telecom in advance we're likely to need 50 lines in the Rose Bank exchange in the next cool. year, which is reasonable because telecom needs to make some sort mm. of preparations yeah. for that. And the new entrant needs some sort of forecasting in terms of what they're actually going to be doing over the next year. The problem is it's almost impossible to forecast that. You know, bring a pile of actuaries yes, yeah. into the rooms and they're still going to look at you and go, well, maybe. So firstly, it's difficult for the entrant to forecast, which means that Telcom is now incurring costs, provisioning for potentially unbundled lines, which may never be unbundled. Secondly, if all three of us want the same lines, for whatever reason, say a corporate customer has decided they want to trial three different operators. So then you've got, well, you know, first come, first serve. Switch it or else, you. even if it's not an argument over the line, it's, you know, there's a limited number of meters in any given exchange. So who gets that space first? And if I, as a provider, need to get in there to do service maintenance at midnight on a Friday night, Am I actually going to have access to that? Because the incumbent operators have frequently turned around and go, no, you may not access my facility directly. You will use my technicians. Which is sort of understandable And it's well. call-out fees. No, look, it's, it's not that it's not understandable. It's just this all gets really, really yes, complicated on a granular who is actually allowed access to this exchange level and sorting all of that out with 420 vans, licensees, and telecom. Can you imagine how long it's going to take? Also, having said that, telecom's not utilizing those things as well as they could be. Yeah, no, look, I mean, t the telecom is a marginal disaster area. Nobody's going to dispute, right? So... ECAS is also a disaster area. Bless them. They've got some really, really good people there, mm. but they're severely underfunded. And um, the Minister and of Communication really, really keeps bad promising me he's going to fix that. So, yeah, they are hamstrung. And so ECASA doesn't necessarily have the resources to do that. The best way on a international best practice level to, to make LLU work to any degree is to get the operators working together. So if you look at Japan, pardon me, NTT decided that it was going to play nice. And they've unveiled the local loop immensely successfully and their broadband has increased exponentially and, and stuff has happened, but that's very much the exception. Forcing people to cooperate inevitably well, so leads to lawsuits. Doesn't like cooperation. They don't like to cooperate and if you force them through regulation, it inevitably leads to lawsuits. We've seen this in this country again and again and again. And it casts backs down from those lawsuits again. Well, they, they can't fight those. They just, they, 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 they get the money defense. to the government doesn't let Why don't they follow what uh, BT them. did? <laughs> British Telecom. The BT open reach model. You know, it only <coughs> took them how many years to yeah, get well to that point? But once on, they did they, it, I mean, it's I better than something. I was there sure. when they just after they implemented it. Yeah. And the guys were so, well, about a year or two afterwards. The change that it, it allowed and the rate that Bullwen was then finally starting to uh, go throughout was incredible. Yeah, the only, the only issue with the open reach model is working out yeah. the costing. Who's going to fund that new entity in the first place? Because you can spin out all of Telcom's, Telcom's copper lines into a separate entity and operate it, but somebody needs to fund it because that's an expensive exercise. So you need to get everybody to agree to fund it, and then you need to get them to agree to fund it to a certain point. The UK regulator is fantastic. I don't know how they do what they do, but they're really good. They're really jacked. Look, they went through a lot of shenanigans. Mm. It's taken them a long mm. time to get to the point, but they really are on the ball. And a lot of these things depend purely on regulatory skill, on having that kind of skill and expertise and that's the thing. And look, you know, South Africa, we've got access to ITU experts. We've got access to static experts. We don't necessarily use the resources we have at our disposal for these sorts of things, which is a problem. We should. And there's a lot. The other argument, of course, with LLU is, um, which always fascinates me on an academic level, is everybody assume it refers to the copper wires. It doesn't technically only refer to copper wires. It refers to anything in a network. And that, what for me is has been interesting to see is ACASA has come out and said, well, we're not necessarily just talking about copper. We could be talking about wireless, Which will be quite cellular. Yeah. And if they can, look, <laughs> if they can get it right, it'll be awesome because it means anybody will be forced to unbundle their network and give other operators access at a reasonable cost. That would be cool. But, I mean, yeah, the to get that, that right. 
Yeah. And, and I must say that every time I'm up like on the spot trying to explain, like it, it depends on your audience, I guess, and this audience is perfectly trying to explain the, the, the intricacies of, of what is a local loop exactly. Yes. But when you're trying to explain to the average guy, you know, like there, there you are talking to the radio, yes. you know, you're talking to Aris or whatever, and, and they're like, what is the local loop? The easiest way to explain to explain this is to say it's the copper line connecting your house to the exchange. Yeah. But it's not necessarily because they've no. got those UMC 1000 things that's like sitting in somewhere in between the exchange yeah. and <laughs> your house. And, yeah. and UMC, which is... What is a UMC? Just for the people who... <laughs> Go for it. For well, those of us who don't know. <laughs> Do <laughs> don't either know of you for. know? It's just I actually don't know. It's basically, no, I, I just know that it's, it's basically a, a little unit that sits in between you and the exchange. And um, the, the one that we sit with um, at our offices, the reason I know about it is because we have to deal with one, is um, it actually runs on ATM and not Metro, yeah. Metro Ethernet. Um, so ATM stands for... Uh, <laughs> ace Oh, wait, 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 wait. Asynchronous transfer mode. That's right. Yeah. Um, and so the, 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 what the benefit yeah. is there, ATM is a fairly old technology. Um, they, they, they are upgrading their old ATM stuff slowly but surely to, yeah. Metro, to Metro E. Um, to provide high speeds, you cannot get 10 meg ADSL unless your exchange is on Metro E, which is our problem in Centurion, right? Yeah. Now, those UMC things make it pretty much impossible for you to get 10 meg because it, it, they run on ATM. No, the only reason why you can't do this, Ethernet provides far higher bandwidth. Yes. So it's not that on ATM you can't get 10 megs on it. It's they're saying there's not enough bandwidth coming into the exchange for us to provision everybody, everybody. with exactly. it. Exactly, yeah. So, so if you're going into a single... Uh, ATM, if, if I remember correctly, is somewhere in the one. Uh, 155 meg. Okay, it's the same as, same as SDH. Uh, 155 meg pipe into that Sorry, box. Sorry, yeah, we are broadcasters. So we've actually got ATM services to get to multi choice into Top TV. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that pipe into the network is 155 meg. Um, and it works in multiples of that. <coughs> now, that your local. I can't remember what YouTube. It's, if there's not enough, if there are enough, few, a small enough mum, number of people connecting to that. You will be able to get your ten megs, which it never that. is. Well, n not in my experience. Um, yeah. It might be in very, very like isolated cases, but in my experience, um, the 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 exchanges are just provisioned in such a way that if it's running on ATM, yeah, uh, there's just not enough bandwidth to go around. Anyway, so anyway, the the discussion it, it it's always like the difficult. Uh, what I was saying is it's difficult for me to try and explain to to the average person that it's not necessarily the copper line, but that's yeah, um, that's the the most uh, that's the most prevalent. Of the it's the most loop. common. It's the thing yeah. is, LLU has been around for a long time because, I mean, the Yanks, sorry, the Americans, because they're not <laughs> all Yankees technically, the Americans took 30 years to liberalize their telecommunications market. I mean, things like local loop, local loop unbundling, it's called um, unbundled network elements is the, is the larger policy issue. Kay. And yeah, so it's not necessarily the local loop. And the reason everybody tends to assume it's copper is because when local loop unbundling started, there only was copper. There wasn't anything else to unbundle. But yeah, technically speaking, it's definitely not only the copper and uh, the caster seems to have grokked that, which is a bonus. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, I've got a question, sorry. Yeah, hit. Samantha. Okay. Yes. Is just the local loop, as we know, the copper to the house, does that all belong only to Telcom? Or is yes. there some instances where, where it could belong to the local city council? Uh, the the city councils have by and it's large rolled fiber. out fiber fiber networks. They they haven't rolled out copper to the curb. They've possibly rolled out fiber to the curb in the in the in the met metro areas. Ikurileni, for example, has got a vast um, fiber network, but again, it goes to it goes to pops or exchanges. It doesn't actually go to houses. to individual houses or buildings. Whereas the copper network does very much go to individual houses or buildings, and it's exclusively owned by Telcom. And then a second question: Do you think that this this whole process could open a cable market for South Africa? Is it? Is it I don't know if we're going to get again because we've only got four million copper lines, and that number's dropping on an annual basis by around two hundred thousand subscribers per year. If you look at Telcom's <laughs> results for the last five subscribers months. or theft? <laughs> no, um, no subscribe. <laughs> natural subscribers attrition. are dropping. Yeah, so yeah natural <laughs> theft What's is another story entirely, oh. and they've started replacing it with fiber where they can, and now people have. I can't. I wish I could remember. Somebody said they've actually started stealing the fiber because they resell it for something. It's Lars. Yeah, Lars said it at one of the right. events, and um, there were there were two stories that came out of that. One was that they they actually make f uh, Kevlar vests because th there's they, they run Kevlar in the little That's fibers, right. and then the other one was that they 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 roll it into little beads apparently that make really pretty decorations. Oh but God. I've asked I've asked our fiber I've asked our fiber guys DFA 
amongst them, um, yeah. but but the guys who rolled out the Joburg fiber network as well. Talk to the mic. Sorry, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm talking to Sam. That's why, that's why I'm not talking into the mic. Talk to Thanks. Sam. Um, <laughs> all right. So um, and and they said that they're not seeing that much theft. So I'd, um, no, maybe people there's just hit telecom. Less incentive for. Uh, Fiber theft compared to yeah, and they protect their stuff. I mean, in order to steal DFA stuff, the, they they secure their manholes and stuff to such an extent. The way that, that somebody broke into their manhole, they steal slack, by the way, but it still breaks mm. the, the actual mm. connection, so you still lose your connectivity. Sure. Um, and the way they did what that was, they dug next to the manhole cover because they can't actually the get side, and yeah, they can't get through the actual manhole. How cover. much of that is just vandalism? You know, you think it's copper. Cut into it, ah, it's fiber. Th that's what they say. Most of the theft is actually accidental. They oh. think it's copper. But uh, like there have been one or two cases where the guys just would steal the slack. Yeah. And that's, I want the fiber. Yeah. So. Or it's, eh, may as well steal something. <laughs> 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 if it's there, okay. I'm really cut it, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm not um, sure I answered Johan's question because <laughs> we got sidetracked. Yes, thank you. Oh, yeah. no, <laughs> a question I want to also, answer. you mentioned with, um, with rural versus urban. Yes. I mean, S South Africa is sitting at what, 60% urban. 60% of the population lives in 80% of the urban. population lives in 20% of the land. Yeah. Uh, land sorry, mass. I'll quit a quick look up. But what, um, why is, it, is that a problem? Why can't we solve the, urban pro uh, the, the rural problem later? Because the government has a mandate that South Africa is a developing economy, so they're, devol they're following a developmental economic policy, which means... A whole bunch of waffle if you're an academic, <laughs> and it's fascinating stuff if you're an economist, but the short version for the rest of us is that the government sees it as its job to make sure it rolls out to rural communities. So commercially, yes, you know, the incentive is let's fix it later, but the fact remains that as a, as a country, we need very much to get everybody up to speed. We've yeah. got a serious no, education problem. We have a serious skills problem. We need to reach out to those rural areas. We need to enable those people to fend for themselves because aside from anything else, they're a huge drain in our social mm. welfare mm. system. No, no, fair enough. I get that, but why can't we solve the easy problems first? Solve, you know... Government doesn't work like that. That's yeah, the I know, thing. but I've why not? The, the fascinating <laughs> thing yeah. for me about this master's degree has been not so much the content, which has been great, but my classmates because... There's about 25 of us, and it's about split 50-50 public and private sector. And the mentality of public sector is completely mm. and utterly different. And if you spend enough time and you listen to them and you actually engage with people, you can understand exactly why they do things the way they do and why it takes so long and what their goals and objectives are. But it's completely foreign. To those of us with a private sector mandate who are chasing profit, the way government works is completely foreign. And that's, that's a real problem. There's a lot of perception in there as well. They yeah. need to be perceived to be making a change. Well, absolutely. It's all you've got to remember. It's all about politics. So, for the no, civil no, servants course. who are working there year after year, not so much. But for the ministers and stuff, if they're not seen to be achieving, they're out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I was coming back. You were talking about Telcom losing so, so much copper and so many. Yes, lines. that's right. But you know, if you think about it, well, they're losing subscribers. I'm subscribers not sure exactly well, what's yeah. happening to that cable. I assume it's still there. Somebody can go buy a pay-as-you-go SIM, sim yeah. card, put 200 rand on there, and it just stays there. There's no fees over time. There's nothing there compared to paying 130 rand every month, whether they and use that line it. or not. Um, Look, mobile broadband is still like probably one of them, uh, unless you get it on promotion like with Celsi and ATA, whose coverage is still incredibly limited, and ATA, which is still relatively untested mm. at the moment. Um, but, I mean, uh, f for the most part, mobile broadband is just very expensive. And this is a question I pose to almost everybody who, who uh, get, you know, a mobile operator who gets up on stage to talk about broadband for all. Mm -hmm. Because it's normally a mobile operator. I'm yeah. going, when are you dropping prices? That's broadband for all. Um, and that's something that mobile broadband simply doesn't deliver at this stage. When it costs less than two rand a meg. Yeah. And it never will at this stage. Uh, at, at I'm this just looking, I mean, it's 10 gig. They're saying 10 gig for 200 yeah. rand. Th if you but bought an out of bundle, it's 20,000 bucks. It's expensive. <laughs> the thing is, rolling out networks is expensive. Upgrading networks, yeah, it's, it's like the old IT adage of you can have it good and you can have it fast, mm. or you can have it, what's the third one? I've gone brain dead. Again. <laughs> you can have it, you you can can have have it slow and crap. Yeah, you can, <laughs> you can have it fast, or you can have yeah. it good, or you can yeah. have it something else, but you can, yes, or choose. Cheap, and choose there we go, two. you can only have two out of three. Yeah. Yeah. It's right. the same as telecoms networks. You can't have all three. You actually just physically cannot have all three. Yep. Move along. Right. <laughs> 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 Moving swiftly along. All right. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's, let's you hunt me. Okay. Let's yeah, Okay. <laughs> let's just tell everybody. I, I was trying to get exactly. the subject going, so I gave them a little Google Doc that I showed on the preview monitor, <laughs> which everybody can download. Uh, we, we should edit that into the, the main video. <laughs> 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 to tell we them should, to move we should, along. Right. We should slap that into cool. the main okay. video. Okay. Moving our swiftly our along. next topic was uh, high video on demand in SA. 
um, from, from my broadband, <laughs> which, you know, technically, exactly what I said is technically correct, but they, I feel like they lied to me. Did I get your click? Then I win. <laughs> <laughs> But now I feel cheated. So next time I read an a, a, a article, like article. That, I'm not going to click. Yeah, I guess. Um, but anyway, it's just got to be that DSTV is doing a video on demand, but it's not like on demand right now. Um, and it will be a limited. I would imagine it's going to be limited. Um, and basically, it will be streamed from the satellites. You Stored need a PVR. So I'm not sure how you'll subscribe to them. And sure this is phone and up and okay, okay, just one thing. They did this with the standard deaf PVRs. There was like five movies you could choose in a month and you could buy one of the five movies to watch and it would then download it to your decoder. And they stopped that. They stopped that. That was a long time. That was like four years ago. Yeah, no, interesting. Because um, Tech Central ran an article about Southtel uh, VOD, which, which is offering a very, well, almost exactly the same service. Yeah. They're not offering any bouquets, only VOD. Mm -hmm. um, well, apparently. We'll see you know, if they launch. Uh, it remains to be seen. But that's the plan. Yeah. And, um, and it's going to work on exactly the same principle because satellites, obviously, if you think about it bandwidth-wise, yes, yeah. it can't be true on demand. So no. you're going to have sort of uh, – and the way I understand it, DVB, uh, that's the, the underlying technology that they use. So we've, we use a European standard for digital broadcasting in South Africa called DVB. DVBS. And DVBS too. Yeah, and for terrestrial broadcasting, we're busy switching to DVB-T2. Oh, DVB yeah. DVBS is standard def. DVBS2 is HD. Is it not? Is it just the encoder? No, wait, wait, come on, fill us in. Okay. Somebody, we have somebody the, in, the, in the office that knows something is about S this. Just stand, is it is right. All of, all of MNET is running on S. Um, S and S2 is just a two different way of modulation. And the easiest way to explain them is just that S2's forward error correction is a lot better. Okay, so then you can get a large bandwidth of it. You get a little bit more bandwidth gain, but your forward error correction, so your, yeah. your, your quality of your delivery is much better. Um, all of these TV platforms is on S. Um, Top TV is on S2. Our platform mounted network is on S2, but it's a it's a tick box on the modulator. So okay, it's, so it's, it's not, not a. a I thought it w I thought it had to come down to what codecs you know if it was MPEG4 versus MPEG2. I think you can use whatever codec you is want on okay. any technology. That DVB-S versus S2 is the modulation that happens cool. between the, st yeah, uh, yeah. the satellite. So what's happen inside of that? There's a transport stream. So inside of that transport stream, you will now get into the nitty gritty of MPEG two, MPEG yeah, four, okay. and all of those. Interesting. Oh, okay. So That's it becomes I thought it fell under yeah. the, the thing is that I can say the VOD model um, is a real time broadcast. So if the movie is an hour long, um, you're you're gonna broadcast it for an hour to the set top box. Yeah. Um, so it's gonna run for an hour to get there. So that will effectively must be repeated every two hours. So let's if you, you catch it halfway through the show now and you want that movie, you're going to have to wait so three hours to, technically to watch it. Technically, it's not on demand then. You're going to have 24 movies a month or something available on your bouquet or your, in, your, in your store because so otherwise you have to wait video, more than a demand. day to get your movie. And it's, and it's going to be rotating. Yeah. Depends yeah. how many so channels they also have. Yeah. Look, no, the, primary, enough, yes. the primary argument around this whole s both these services are going to be that you're going to put – this is to compete with the video rental market because that time period between Cinema House and before it appears on Mnet, um, what's in between is your rental market. And the same with Southtel. They're going to try and fill that they can control who buys, rents that movie off the satellite instead of going to a store. So, yes, what's going to happen with uh, Video Den and Video Rama and I those wouldn't cars? worry because it's going to have to well, – how really, when you, when you rent a movie, it's like, oh, let's rent a movie. You go to the store, you rent a movie. It's now, oh, let's rent a movie. Oh, yeah, you've got to wait two days to get this. Here's some on-demand. Yeah. I demand but Netflix. I, I, I want it like Netflix, <laughs> which we know some people have been playing with with VPNs and stuff like that. So you, and it apparently does work in this country. If you can like VPN. a job. <laughs> I, 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 I have it on fairly good authority. You can actually just make your connection to Netflix um, via uh, a, a VPN service like <coughs> StrongVPN. And um, <laughs> then... <laughs> half, half. <laughs> and, and then you can disconnect <laughs> it. So you just make your connection, buy what you want, no. start the stream, and then disconnect it. Doesn't no. it work anymore? No, it's never worked. Um, Apparently it does. I have this on... Uh, I've, on I've, I've reverse engineered. That, that PC format uh, told me. Um, okay, then they were very lucky. Um, yeah, strong VPN works from South Africa into Netflix. So please uh, get your thirty Support days strong eval VPN. and strong VPN. <laughs> but uh, just and in short, that, what's it, um, twenty one rand, 20, three months, twenty one dollars for three months uh, for the strong VPN. Actually, twenty one dollars, yeah. And then eight dollars for the Netflix. It's like a lot cheaper than. You have a else. referral code. You might want to put that in the show notes. Uh, no, there's no referrals. Oh. Um, <laughs> but let me just say, um, what I have reverse engineered out of the technology is they're actually using um, Amazon servers. So yeah. that those flicks are all sitting, all those movies are sitting it's on S3, Amazon servers. It? 
yeah. on the S3 server. So um, as long as you don't go into buffer, yes, that theory will work. That is, uh, it, it only detects your source country when you start the stream. And the stream are the streams are all DRM, so that's when the check. So you can go f when you've registered, you can browse the whole of the Netflix website from anywhere in the world. You can load your queue, you can manage your queue, everything. But only when you start, it physically starts buffering up to four percent, and then tells you wrong country, that's and then annoying. goes on from there. Mm. But if you run it through the VPN, it yeah, works it works fine. like a charm. <laughs> okay, strong. VPN. So for geeks, there are ways and means. Mm. Or, or rent yourself a VPS server in the states and set up your own VPN. There you go. Well, since it's an S3, <laughs> get an S3 server. Yeah, yeah. They've got, they've got <laughs> yeah. the small ones for free. Yeah. You just need your credit card, and there you go. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh yeah, because you don't even get charged for bandwidth then, because it's on no, the you same do. network. You, oh, you no. get charged for bandwidth to here though. Yes, but you won't get charged with the internet no. bandwidth. And it'll be fast. And it'll be f there we go. <laughs> I'm going to try this. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> <laughs> cool. We anyway. expect to report next week. Uh, well, no. On my G desk. Give me a month. I've got <laughs> so little free time at the moment. Um, next story. Uh, well, free to level 20. Just don't do it. I mean, I've just don't do it. This is like crack. Just, just don't do it. Johan, how's well? <laughs> wait, wait. What's the story? <laughs> if, if you I missed this. Wait. Up it to tw level 20 now. Yeah. Yes. If you, you oh, want to play, you can just download the, the game. You don't um, even have to download the whole game, right? They've, they've implemented with um, Leech King. Yeah. You actually download 40 Mac installer, and then it will stream the game. Oh, cool. So, yes, you'll eventually end up with the whole game. So, don't do this on your mobile connection. Yeah. But um, the whole download is like 280 Mac, and you can start playing. And as you enter certain areas in the game, it will actually stream the additional content down. Oh, very cool. Um, and then they said once you reach level 20, if you're really keen, uh, it's something like $19 to get the full game. Are uh, you looking at me? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it is. It's about $19. I read the article. It's Look, $19 to if get If you want to get into WoW, very good tip. Don't, don't buy online. Just go to um, Look and Listen and just buy the box set. Uh, look at the Battle Chess box set. It works you a lot cheaper or than game. buying the games. Come on, what's game? GameStop? BT Games. BT Games. BT Games. BT Games. Mm. BT Games. But look for the Battle Chess version. Yeah. Um, cool. Great. Oh, uh, 14 days. Yes. Okay. Oh, so it's level 20 for 14 days. Okay. So all they've done is that it was always level, level 10. Level. Yeah. Level 10, 14 days. have now make it level 20. Yeah, I remember days. I was quite Very frustrated. Yeah. I was playing Rift on a trial account as well. And I hit level 15 and I couldn't level anymore. Like, and did that in a weekend. Very yeah. sad. And then also, so uh, seeing as you brought it up. <laughs> World of Warcraft, you also, if you are an evaluation uh, user, you can't get anything from other players. So yes. you're playing solo. That's to cut out those gold traders who stole my account and <laughs> like, wiped out my real ID friends. <laughs> Hackers, I hate you. <laughs> but that was good news. Thank you. All right. so, the, Thank you. So, the, so my phone call to the, to the lols boat worked. <laughs> Hack down this battle net. <laughs> uh, okay, next one, browsers. Uh, a whole bunch of browsers came out last week and this week. Um, I know hey, Firefox five. five came out. Hey, it looks pretty good. Looks the same. Still no, but I, li I, I like the f I like the tabs, dude. The tabs are really cool. What have they done to the tabs? I'm talking about the, the pinning tabs. Tab grouping and app tabs. Tab grouping is actually quite tab useful if you've got several. It has tab hundred tabs open. You it can doesn't have tabs. Crashes through. everything, right? You do. Okay, no, maybe not several hundred, but huh. you know, nearly a hundred tabs. A lot. So you can then group it up into to what you want. It makes switching between groups quite nice and easy. I, I must say why this is so bad is I don't use Firefox anymore. No, I don't either. I, I only use if I if I if I'm like editing a website that I am developing, then I'll pull up Firefox, which is it's the best one for editing. Yeah, I, none of the others beat it with the tools. But then when I'm actually browsing, I'm just on Chrome all the time now. Yeah, well, Multi hang on, this grouping Multiple thing hasn't that been Chrome. in Firefox for a while now? No, Multi I, I, it's been in it's been in up. Multiple while. Google Apps accounts. That's the only reason why I use Firefox. So you can actually log into the other accounts in Firefox. Oh, yeah. No, true. I do do that because flipping YouTube is we've got our Let's Talk Network YouTube account, which I, I don't really want to link into my other Google accounts. And you can't, if you log into Google accounts, you've got to log out every time you want to go into Something YouTube. Else. I can't be logging into one YouTube account that's separate. <laughs> It's a pain. I remember, uh, sorry, sorry, since we're talking about this, I'm going to take this opportunity to rage a little bit. I actually use a lot of browsers as I've, I've recently been upgraded to webmaster of my broadband, it seems. Congratulations, um, I think. <laughs> well, well done. Well, good I'm luck. Really proud. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a crap load of work, I'll have you know. But uh, um, like using all these browsers now, 
Um, Opera does tab grouping way better than Firefox does. Do you want to mention Opera has just released a new version? Yeah, yeah. Opera has released 11.5 now. got it right. Yes. Well <laughs> done. <laughs> yes. You don't know how I've been practicing this in my head all the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no. And, um, and so now it's available in Zulu. And Swahili. Yes. Yeah. And now instead of, uh, it seems that instead of downloading the language pack separately, they all come bundled in the main I download. I must say, I tweeted the fact and then somebody like took me on and says, yes, but Firefox has had that for like years. It's had Afrikaans for, for a while, not for Zulu. No, it's, it's had Zulu, um, Zulu as well. Time. It's had Zulu for a while. Yeah. Not according to their press release. No. Firefox is. Oh, oh, Firefox, Firefox, yeah. Yeah. Firefox, yeah. Firefox, no, no, Firefox has had, had for ages. Yeah, Firefox has yeah. had all these languages for ages, but that's because that I think the translate.org um, got involved, team, yes. yeah, um, They're translate, awesome. yeah. And uh, anyway, so Opera, uh, so yeah, Opera is maybe a little bit late on the Zulu side of things, but it's tab groupings kick Firefox. Have like you tried the new tab grouping on Firefox? Yes, it okay. is slow. And it's it's so you good. Still, you still say uh, Opera is better. Yeah, cool. I, I would say Opera is better simply because it's click drag grouping. Mm. Um, with Firefox, it's key yeah, combo and then like make groups and manage. It's like using Dropbox versus using Sugar Sugar Sync, I'd say. So one is is powerful um, but time consuming. The other one is click and drag. Dropbox for the win. <laughs> I love Dropbox. <laughs> love like two Dropbox. apps this year are WhatsApp and, and Dropbox. Dropbox. Dude, I don't use WhatsApp. You should. It's it we have a let's talk it's, it's WhatsApp MMS and it, what's MMS? It's MMS, MMS done right. Yeah. We'll try it. I'll have to try it. No, the group chat awesome. is just awesome. And it works on... The group chat is... Uh, Nokia, Android, Blackberry, uh, iPhone. All of, them. It's all of them. It just works, and it works well. Okay, cool. And you don't have to you know, friend people or anything like that, because if the number's in your uh, address book, mm. and uh, the person on the other side, because it registers to the number of the phone, they immediately pop up. Okay, cool. So I it works really it. well. Uh, do you want to talk some of the other things from op Opera? Um, yeah, Ooh, I mean, we, almost. <laughs> well done. <laughs> um, so, so in addition to, I mean, the, the, the language announcement is actually fairly unexciting. I think most people use English browsers anyway, um, uh, unless you're in a, a totally non-English speaking country. Um, but the, what Opera 11.5 has done is introduced um, extensions for... Um, uh, for speed their speed dial. dial. For guys who don't use Opera, Opera... Um, I wouldn't say they were the first to do speed dial, but they were among the first, uh, at least, to do yeah, speed dial, yeah. which is effectively a, a grid of nine, so a three by three grid. On your home, when you open a new tab, it shows you a three by three grid. Um, Goethe is shaking his head because it's configurable now. It used to be a three by three grid. Oh, it used to be up to five by five. Apparently. Sure. <laughs> all right, all right. So <laughs> it's a grid. It's a grid, and you can um, and you can put your shortcuts or not your shortcuts in there, your bookmarks in there. Yeah. And it does a little thumbnail of the website. That's the speed dial. Bar, right? Similar. Now you've got extensions that you can put in there. RSS reader, little weather applet. And they, uh, they live. We, 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 when you say the extensions, those little tabs actually can live and update in yeah, real time. Yeah. So, so you can sit there actually be watching the different websites. Yeah. So if you, if you will, I mean, Opera has had extensions for a while now, I think since one of its <laughs> releases last year. Um, and, the, and so basically all they've done really is they've opened up an API to talk directly to speed dial. So it's still an extension. Um, but now you can now you can place a widget. It's effectively a widget layer on your speed dial screen. Okay, so, sorry to to I've never I haven't used Opera in a really long time. Is that it? Is that the new release? Um, I can't remember. It's got more feature. HTML5 features. Oh, okay, so oh, yeah, that's oh, okay. Right. Well, well, so a bunch I was of geeky just like features. A bit yeah. worried that they, I remember because they made a big hoopla about this. Yeah, and no, now no, it's, no, it's a bit more. Ooh, it's now. The, they, they make okay. a hoopla about every single release. So um, it, even even small ones like this one is actually comparatively small to the ones that they did last year. Okay. Um, so, but it's still uh, they've, they've these were the big user land uh, features that they've done, and they've done a whole bunch of backend stuff. They've implemented um, some new HTML5 elements. Um, I must actually just go and see if I can find this for Web you guys. GL? Um, no, not to I my knowledge. I didn't awesome see that. that. Yeah, they said they are working on it, um, and they're not going to release it to any browser until it works on all devices, uh, Linux, yes, and okay. uh, and that's got to be tricky with acceleration. Yeah, that's got to be tricky trying to do. Oh, something that's like cool. That. Look, I must say I played around a tiny bit, not so much on the thing. I downloaded it to my phone. I was playing with the Opera Mini and the Opera Opera. Opera. Damn it. <laughs> Opera <laughs> Mini and Opera Mobile. Not the fat uh, lady who got a degree from Bloom today. No, no, no. <laughs> Wasn't um, it last week? No. No, it was this week. Today. Earlier this week. Yeah. Yeah. According and to my Twitter feed, it was today. It's, oh. it's not that much better. I would say the one in Android browsers is more compliant. The, the site's rendered better. 
But when you turn on the speed dial, the speed accelerator thing in the Opera Mini, it's scarily quicker. It's noticeably different in speed. So depending, and it uses significantly less bandwidth. Which yep. is always a bonus. Yeah, uh, I was describing it earlier as BIS on steroids, and, and that's really what it feels like. Um, BIS is, is BlackBerry's uh, service, mm. which, which um, offers very similar functionality, compression uh, and stuff. Uh, but of course, BIS offers security as well, yeah. which I don't think Opera Turbo makes any claim to. Um, so uh, their focus is really just on uh, getting bandwidth costs down and getting it down Let's as see. fast as possible. Um, all right, so hang on. I just fired up the press release. They've got password <coughs> synchronization uh, through Opera Link. Mm. Um, they've got a new design. One thing I asked about that, it doesn't synchronize this through to the mini or mobile, but they did Your say password. that will, will be coming. My okay. question, have you guys ever run across a bookmark <coughs> password flipping history syncing thing that will sync to your own server? No, no. Okay. not offhand. Well, if, any, if anyone knows yes. about one, yes. let me know, please. Uh, Mozilla's sync one? Yeah. That's built in. You can sync to your own server. Seriously? Yeah. Very cool. Okay. Nice. I'm going to have to go look at that. Head and check yeah. that out. Yeah. All right. And for the, 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 the uh, web geeks out there, they have uh, changed some CSS stuff, SVG rendering. They have implemented um, session history, navigation, W3C file API, class list, and the element. That's what the press release said, but I don't know what the element means in uh, the HTML5 spec, to be completely honest. Yeah. So, oh. yeah. Sorry about that, guys. I know that's a very ungeeky thing to say, but cool. I genuinely don't know. All right. But cool. We'll yeah, indeed. On uh, one thing I did want to say is I have noticed when sites break in other web browsers, so if I'm good Chrome and it doesn't open in Chrome or Firefox, it normally will open in Opera, as in it's, it seems to be Opera. Mm -hmm. It's slightly more compatible with IE, the old IE sites. Interesting. So I must say that, that it didn't used to be. Opera used to have a terrible reputation in terms of compatibility. It was the most W3C compliant browser, and that kicked them in the pants because nobody was building W3C compliant websites. Everyone was building IE. Yeah, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. You know okay. What? Facebook rival from Google. Finally, Google. Third Plus. time's the charm. So if anybody has an invite, we all want one. Yes. Swing it. Send it to me first. Spread the love. Tim at Let's Talk Network TV. Yeah. What are we talking about? Google Plus. Google Plus. Um, it's their answer to Facebook, so it's basically social networking, um, and it does a whole bunch. It's got cir social circles, uh, like, uh, like Diaspora. Advantages, so you can actually... Oh, just Diaspora had that. It's just, it was just called groups. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. It, it actually is a cool idea. Really. Yeah, exactly. Um, the, the Facebook implementation of you, the same thing is pretty crappy. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a good idea. And I that's the other thing. I mean, all these guys <coughs> have these ideas... But I think it's going to come down to who has the best implementation of this idea. Yeah. So, so far, Diaspora has kind of dropped the ball a little. But I wonder how long it's going to take Facebook to fix this kind yes. of problems. Yes, because they obviously have the leading edge advantage. Yeah. Um, I mean, they've probably, so. they've probably been working on this for a while already. Even. Yeah. But also the thing is, I don't know if you noticed, you can also export all your data from it. From Google or Facebook Google. now? Yes. That's, uh, Google, th they've got that data liberaliz liberalization yeah. blog. Yeah. And I read a very interesting piece in IEEE Spectrum. I still read engineering mags. Hard have it I to get break. it once a month. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, they've got an online mag. That's why I get it. I subscribe yes, to the little newsletter thingy. And a guy there detailed in grievous detail um, how, he sw how he went Google free. Yeah. And oh, yes, I saw and, that. And, yes. and where else can you do that? Where else can you go... No, I don't want Google to have my data anymore. Turn, delete your session history from their, from their servers. Um, d uh, like, get rid of your accounts um, and switching from Gmail to anything else. Because Gmail revolutionized webmail. Yeah. So um, the, now everybody has, like, unlimited storage, almost unlimited storage. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, the same searchable kind of interface and conversation views and all that stuff. Um, um, uh, and so getting your data out of their contacts list, oh. out of all that stuff, it's so easy. Do, I've you, got one question for that. Wherever you move it to, you won't be able to do the same. No, that's the and problem. And this, this guy said he, like he moved out of Google Docs, but he went to um, Microsoft Office and syncing to like SkyDrive or whatever um, to achieve the same functionality. So That reminds me. Uh, MWeb also released a 5 gig, cloud if you've got an MWeb account, cloud service. Uh, cloud storage. Yeah, I haven't been able I to try it. I looked at it very quickly. It's web-based. Uh, okay. It's upload and download. My main thing is I, I still need to look. I want to see if there's some APIs for it. Yeah. We want uh, apps. Word of advice, if you are trying to sign up for it, do it in Firefox, not in Chrome. Okay. Because there's a little text box that doesn't appear in the Chrome browser that you need to type a password that get, it gets SMS to you in. 
I've had that happen it does to me appear on, in Firefox. Though. I've had that happen to me on M website um, before actually. No, it worked in Chrome. Must be in Chromium. Chrome. Okay. No, I signed up and it was in Chrome. Oh no, I just tried to sign up today. It, it worked perfectly. I just had to go over to Firefox. All right. Cool. Just a minor bug. I'm sure they'll fix it in the next day or two. But just if people are currently having a problem. This just right. in on Twitter. Apparently, MySpace got sold for 35 million. Mm. Given <laughs> what they were originally <laughs> selling for. <laughs> <laughs> that How is much got to sting. How much did they a buy? Lot. How much did what's his like over 100, 100 million? Wasn't it? The original buying was, price. I thought it was way more than that. I thought it was near the billions. I don't remember to be completely yeah. honest. Okay. But it wasn't. It's order of <laughs> magnitude higher than they sold it for. Yeah. Cool. Oh. All right, into the last story. Uh, apparently, Naked News does not degrade women. Do they okay. have males on there? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. The whole concept of Naked News is it's a bunch of half-naked women reading the news topless. So it's, to, so it's to get men to actually watch the news? I'm not entirely sure what they do, but it's ETV. You know, they have some dodgy stuff on there. Well, right? Let's be I honest. I think ETV yeah. bought into it. it was, it's actually a website. Yeah. Um, but I think e ETV... But it's ETV that broadcasts it. So yeah, yeah. They the broadcast the that other dodgy stuff on yes. a Friday night that nobody talks about. But <laughs> one nice thing uh, one nice thing that the, the BCS, BCCSA did say is, if you don't like it, change the channel. Yeah, precisely. That's the short version. Yeah. And and somebody... Uh, uh, may, uh, Which we should really have a lot more of with this country. Yeah. If you don't like it, yeah. change the channel. Yeah. Stop and whining. Yeah. Yeah. And somebody in the My Broadband Forum made an interesting observation because we have a fairly conservative government. We forget this. Yeah, we do. Yeah, very uh, conservative. Uh, yeah. Uh, and, and yet, I mean, censorship, censorship in South Africa, you know, every now and again we have to fight against it. But censorship in South Africa is actually fairly lenient. Compared um, to most African countries, we are very liberal on things like nudity and homosexuality. Yeah. and freedom of religion and yeah. all sorts I mean, of other stuff which we all take for granted. Exactly, and and other other countries are still fighting for that kind of stuff. So it and somebody in the uh, in the forum it was maybe a little bit too negative uh, as as it so happens to happen on the my broadband forums, but said incredibly surprised that our hyper conservative government let this through. But I think we forget that our hyper conservative government actually doesn't concern this themselves with many sensitive topics. Mm -hmm. Also, on with things. the uh, constitution we have. Yeah, uh, there's like gay, gay marriage is yes. the one. They, it's constitutionally they got taken, enshrined. Uh. Yeah, got taken to court and basically said you're not. So constitutionally, a lot of these things are enshrined, and the government could could initially start, but uh, there's a lot of people who would change it. Yes, and it would get stopped in the constitutional court unless the new uh, what's it the. Uh, Secrecy bill comes through and then then uh, protection it. of information. Yeah. <laughs> they've said <laughs> they, they, they said they're going to revise that. Though you can't classify the news <laughs> for obvious reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Aside uh, from anything else, it's not it's not actually state information that the state owns. Yeah. So that in well, of itself is a problem. I guess you could classify it as. Um, you could classify it as riling up the populace. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> uh, apparently they've mended a lot of it out. They say this, the new revision I'm is just a lot talking nonsense. better, but there's still one or two. Well, there's, there's no public interest defense. So for us yep. as journalists, if we're publishing state information, we're still liable to be in jail for 25 years if they're fined against us. The civil servant who has leaked the information to us is liable for a 100,000 rand fine or three years in jail, which is a little bit hypocritical if you ask <laughs> me. But hey. Yeah, in right. Afrikaans we have a saying, die dealer is a good as die dealer. Yeah, precies. <laughs> right. Anyway, the government hasn't worked that out yet, but I'm sure they will. Mm, let's mm. hope so. They've changed a lot already. That's been really, really positive changes so far. Cool. Right, on that note, we're going to end the show. Thank you, Samantha Perry. You're welcome. Uh, we can find you at Twitter at Samantha Perry. That's uh, me. And at Brainstorm, www.brainstorm.co.za. Uh, www Brainstormmag.co.za. Brainstorm Brainstorm is an advertising agency in Cape Town, so technically we're IT Web Brainstorm because of that okay. copyright oh issue. Right. Okay, cool. Thingy. Uh, thanks, Jan. You can find me at more, My Broadband and all the staff writer articles. Just kick me there, exactly. <laughs> uh, Stuart... <laughs> Uh, and mixing Johan Els and myself to Mark. Cheers. Good Cheers night. Everyone. Bye. <laughs>